Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado, your host for Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. I am one excited today about uh, this episode of our uh, podcast. As you know, we are in October, the month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a month dedicated to, to increase awareness of this disease in our community. It's a month where we join forces against this disease through education, through awareness, even through fundraising. And certainly 2020 has been a year that has reminded us how much we need to be a part of communities for support and communities that inspire hope. And so today it is my desire that this broadcast or this um, this conversation that we're going to have today around breast cancer self-care and the role of support is going to um, really, really energize us and inspire hope in each and every one of us. You're going to be blessed by our program today. All right. Well, I am glad to have you here with us today. This um, show today is going to be really, really a good, a fun show. It should be really fun. I have a very fun guest in in the podcast studio with us today, and that is um, in the person of my sister and my friend, Felicia Yvonne McBride. I am uh, delighted to have her with us today and I want to read um, some of the uh, some of her bio just a little snippet so you'll know who she is and why I invited her to be in our discussion today so Felicia um, uh, McBride was born and raised on the south side of Chicago Illinois where she still resides she works at a nonprofit agency that focuses on building strong families and powerful communities. Although she does not have children of her own, she is a very proud and doting aunt of both a niece and a nephew. Felicia is an active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And her passions include traveling, fine dining, and spending quality time with family and friends. Felicia is a 12-year Breast cancer survivor. Yay! (laughs) With that, she considers her mission to be a walking testimony for those who find themselves in the fight. Welcome, Felicia, to the Your Life podcast, Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. Thank you for being here with us. Thank, Thank you for me. inviting me. I'm so excited. I wow, am really, I'm uh, excited about this opportunity to share. Wow. I'm, I'm so glad to have you. And listen, a fun fact about Felicia. Felicia <laughs> is also one of my oldest friends in the world, right? Yeah. Not old in age, but <laughs> since we were in the fourth grade, yes, we were nine years old, and I'm 57, and she'll be 57 next month, right? right. <laughs> in November, she'll be 57. We both 1963 babies, and right. we have been walking together since fourth grade. We went to elementary school together at Bryn Mawr Elementary School on the south side of Chicago on Jeffrey, on Jeffrey yeah. Street. And then we we just couldn't get enough of each other, so we went to high school together at CBS, Chicago Vocational High School, class of 1981. <laughs> how many years ago was that? Do you know how many years ago that was? Let's see. Oh, Lord. What is it now? now? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. So we have been friends since we were yeah. nine years old. So we've been friends over 40 years. Yeah. 43 or yes. whatever. It is. Yeah. We have been together for a long time and we've seen each other through a whole lot of ups and downs. She was in my wedding. She was one of my brides right. in my wedding. We've been married 27 years. So you know how long ago that was. And, um, <laughs> 
Yes, she's an auntie to my children, and yeah. we have just been sisters for a long time, and um, and, and best friends for a long time. And um, I am just so glad uh, to have her with us as we're talking about. Um, surviving breast cancer. And um, our topic today is surviving breast cancer, the role of self-care and support, the role of self-care and support in surviving breast cancer. And I thought it not a robbery to ask my good friend, my soror, my sister uh, to come on and share her journey with us. When is your survivor anniversary? I heard in your bio, it's been 12 years. I can't believe it's been that long. I know, I know that went by. It is 3-10-08, yes. Yeah. 3-10-08, right, right, right. And so um, I remember getting that phone call mm -hmm. and you sharing with me and Janine and our, our community of friends that you had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Yes, yes. And I remember as your friend and your sister, how I just kind of sunk in my seat. Mm -hmm. And of course I didn't, you know, you know, I put on my, my happy face, right. you know, I couldn't, I couldn't let you know. I was like, Ooh, but I <laughs> the feeling of, wow, my girlfriend, my, my sister, my, my childhood girlfriend mm -hmm. is now faced with a fight. Yeah. A, the fight of her life. Yeah. So Felicia, walk us through your journey. Walk us through your journey. What was your first thought when you got, when you, how did you find it? First of all, talk to us about how you yeah. found the, the lump and, and just walk us through your journey. So I found my lump. <laughs> Totally on an accident. I wish I could tell the story of I was being responsible and doing my monthly exam, but that wasn't the case. I had been out in Chicago shoveling snow, so I was tired. Came, came in, laid across the bed, and I just laid down. My remote was on the side of me. I grabbed my remote to change the channel and for the television. I just grabbed it. It was late, and I went across with the remote. When I went across, I felt a lump. So I was like, huh, I immediately called my mom. She's like, okay, you just finished the shoveling. Maybe you strained a little something, but let's make, let's make a, um, an appointment. So I did. So within a couple of days, I made an appointment. At the time I was 44, my doctor was like, I don't feel anything, um, but we, we, we'll send you anyway. Uh, so I went, in fact, I, I had an appointment at the, at the hospital and then I had an appointment to buy a car. That's how unconcerned I was. I'm like, okay, it's nothing. Got to the hospital. They did an examination. All of a, all of a sudden they started calling people. I was like, can I go? I have an appointment and it's a Honda and I think it's going to be gone if you keep me here. So they kept me. I went through a battery of tests and I, mind you, I was in between. Uh, mammograms that had a mammogram maybe eight months later and I was coming up on another mammogram. So I was in between, I had at least been doing that. So I was in between mammograms. So they did, they took the test. I went home. They called me maybe a week later to come in. That's when I, I thought something might be wrong. Oh, I had, I had, I actually had I went to the hospital. I missed my car appointment. I actually went out that night. Still thinking I had a gala. So I covered up the, the band-aids that they had on me with my gala dress and went on, and went out. So I'm still thinking this cannot be me. So they called me a week later. They asked me if somebody could come with me. I'm like, okay. So my dad drove and my mom um, came with me. So they gave me the news. They were like, you are at stage two breast cancer from what we can feel. And the test looks like it's very aggressive. So if I hadn't discovered it on my own or had missed the mammogram, we might be in a different situation now. Wow. 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> and I came, that's funny that you mentioned speaking to me. I came home, I called our other good girlfriend, Janine, mm -hmm. said, give me an hour. When she walked through the door, you were on the phone to talk to me. Within mm -hmm. an hour of being diagnosed, you were there. Is she called me, Janine called me and she said, hey, what you doing? You know, and I'm like, oh, good. What's, what's going on? She said, sit down. And he tell you something. I'm like, what's going on? And she was like, Fee just got diagnosed. I'm on my way with that. I was like, what plane do I need to be getting on? Because I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> so, I mean, it was... Yeah, you're right. you're saying that too. Do I need to come there? What do I need to do? Yeah, I'm on my way. I just I called my husband, like, we need to get a plane ticket because I have to go to Chicago because police shouldn't go down. And he was like, What calm down? What? But yeah, man, yeah. that was that was something. And um, so Fee, what what went through your mind? What went through your mind when you first heard the words breast cancer? I was stunned, um, in shock. One of the things that hurt my feelings the most, my mom started crying. I cried a little bit, but they called my dad back there. And when they told him, he started crying. Oh, yeah. That's what broke. I, don't, I didn't see my dad cry very often, maybe two times before that. The fact that my dad started crying is what took me out. That's a, yes. Wow. So wow. After that, yeah. After we had our moment, I looked at the doctor and said, what do we need to do? Okay. What do we need did to you, do? Did you, did you ever have any thoughts of fear or anxiety, anger, or anything like that? No, I didn't. I was so focused on I have to fight because wow. my only example before that was my maternal grandmother, and she didn't last. She didn't. So I was like, my story has to be different. And wow. it's funny, my sister asked me, she said, do you feel as though your body has um, let you down for some reason? Mm -hmm. she said, do you feel that? And I said, I hadn't thought about that because I had been exercising and I eat decent. I hadn't thought of it that way. But I was so busy looking for like for what do we have to do? I was just in forward motion. Okay, okay, okay. So you immediately jumped into fight. Yeah. Okay. So because you know sometimes our experiences when we hit a wall or a crisis moment, we go through thoughts. You know, some people fl go through flight, mm -hmm. and then some people go get right in fight mode. And so you you are a fighter. You've always been a fighter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like we're growing up together, right? <laughs> yeah, we had to fight on the south side of Chicago. Come on, girl, walk to school together. Walking in the snow, we had to look like we could fight if nothing else. Even if we, <laughs> like I, you know, I beat you down, right? <laughs> and you know, um, fee, fee, you know, when you, when you, when you talk about, um. Just the the whole idea of you you it, what was amazing is you said your mother was there, your father was there, you called Janine. I'm I know you called Deanna. Mm -hmm. Within an hour, I was on the phone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and so you immediately had a support system. And so yeah, that's what I want to talk about. I and I posted on Facebook for my ten year anniversary. I. I said how we all got that got here together. I thank Drew, I thank Janine, some of my sorority sisters, my yeah. family. Because it wasn't, and that might have been why I was in fight, because I didn't have time to think anything else. Because, like I said, within an hour, you were on the phone. Janine was literally in my face. I had another girlfriend, Tamara, who was in my face. Yeah. I guess, you know, they were saying, you know, Deanna is just trying to find a plane ticket right now. That's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I, I had phone calls. I had uh, sorority sisters come and visit. I had people that, you know, took naps with me while I was going with treatment. Even wow. my license plate says Survivor 3. And I, even though I was diagnosed in the third month, I never went to chemo without three people. My mom, Janine, 
and Tamara. Wow. I, I, and none of them ever missed a chemo treatment with me. You had three people with you every chemo every session. Time. How many sessions of chemo did you have? Did I have four? Four or six. I can't remember. Okay. And they never missed. And I, I mean, chemo is in the middle of the day when people work. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, you have, did you have any anything beyond chemo? Did you have radiation treatment or anything? I had radiation treatment. Mm -hmm. I had I had uh, tamoxifen, so I had your net for years, and well, then now on anolazole. So technically, I am still in treatment because I still take medication. Oh, okay. So was what was the first medication you mentioned? It was something uh, with tamoxifen. Okay, and is. What was the what's the process? Is that an oral medication or is that oral medication? It's only supposed to be for five years, but then it's supposed to force you into menopause. And since my body thinks it's young, it didn't go into menopause. So it's like we can't change your medication too. <laughs> <laughs> your body is young, honey. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yes, yeah. but my support system. You know, they would ask me, did I want to take any medication for depression? I didn't need any of that. I didn't feel depressed. But I just had, I, I cannot thank my support system enough. I never asked for anything. I did not ask for one thing. And every all my needs were taken care of. Uh, wow. I, remember, I know I talk about Janine a lot. I was reading a book. And I had self-diagnosed myself. And that's when I was just not positive that day. Janine came and got that book and took it to my mom. She's like, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> you like you self-diagnosed yourself and you got yeah, you know, we read stuff on the internet and all right. kind of stuff. And we I can I not recommend that. that. <laughs> I do not recommend that. Yeah. So, you know. My other girlfriend, Tamara, I would just want, I just took naps. She would come take naps with me. I had a girlfriend, a sorority sister that lived in Atlanta who flew in and cooked for me and put stuff in the freezer because I didn't have an appetite. But she made plain things like potato soup, something that didn't have a lot of taste because I really didn't have a taste, but it has some, you know, substance to it. Okay. So having a community that you didn't have to ask for one thing, that's a blessing. Not wow. thing. That that is, I mean, that's amazing because you know, uh, some some women. I I um I interviewed Sora Shermanita mm -hmm. um, as well. You know, she's a survivor, and I interviewed her, and we were talking about um how some women do not have that kind of support. Some women go through alone, and she talked about her support group that she was a part of. And her sisters, her family, okay. and and being connected to sorority sisters. She's part of my sister's keeper foundation. And those of us that were in the board with her during that time walked through that with her. And um, mm -hmm. so we just talked about that because you know, sometimes people go through. Did you did I know for you right off you had um a support system when you said your mother was there, your father was there, Janine was there, and you never went to chemo without more than three people. Mm -hmm. Do, were you ever tempted to isolate? I don't, you know, I know you had good support system, but did you ever feel like you wanted to isolate yourself or, or, you know, go so deep inward? Did you? Um, no, I didn't feel like I needed to isolate. I kept moving okay uh, as you know i was traveling because you had i, I came to atlanta janine and i came to atlanta yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. made me wear a mask on the plane um <laughs> <laughs> it's see, mama knew something we need, see mama knew about the mask back then right, see? Right, exactly yeah. exactly now we wear masks every day everywhere <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you were in instrumental in introducing me to another survivor. You know, your mom took me there um, to meet her, then that's Beth. Um, so I didn't feel the need to isolate. I was, at, there was one time where my white cells were very low, so I had to, to self isolate. But still, my mom would come and Janine would call. 
Okay. So I, still, I still wasn't alone. Okay. And even what would, you, what would you say to women who do not have that support or that feel alone in this process? I think you should actually seek out support. Okay. No, there were support groups. Um and they they will actually walk you through it. I, I was part of the support group. One was a little the women were older, so I didn't feel like I could, could connect, but mm -hmm. I did find one where women were around my age, and so they were having some of the same issues, even with dating and you know, some of the other things that affect you when you had went through you know, a major uh, life change like this. So I, I would say reach out to support groups. And there are plenty of them. I feel like even within the 12 years, there's been um, a lot of progress in helplines and support groups and products. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's good. You know, um, I believe, I you know, I'm the oldest of four. Mm -hmm. And so I believe in, um, women connecting to other women, women being there, you know, we grew up together and we were like each other's sisters, even though we were in blood, we were right. like each other. We was always at each other's house. Right. So my, you know, my mama was your mama. Your mama, right. was, my mama. <laughs> mama Golden was our mama, you know, Janine's right. Well, you know, so we didn't, we didn't, we always, it seemed like we always kind of had this sense of sisterhood going. Yeah. Um, but there's so many women that do not have that. And so, you know, that's why I wanted us to talk about the role of support in getting through a tough time like this in your life. I mean, can you imagine what your life would have been like if you didn't have that support? I can't. Or going through this process? I, I really, I, I can imagine it's difficult because at one, I remember one chemo session we were at, the three of us, um, you know, three plus me, and there was a lady there who had to take a cab home after chemo or the bus. She was there by herself and it never even crossed my mind that I would be by myself. It never crossed the people who were there um, that I would be by myself. So, I, I felt bad, but I, I, that is a reality. And we looked for, we never saw her again because I think we had discussed it and we were going to talk to her or see if anything we could do. But no, I just, I just can't. But okay. I have to seek it out. I, I would not want anybody to go into self isolation. Okay. And, you know, one of the things I put in my bio is that I, I like to think of myself as a walking testimony. Because I felt like I had a great support system, family. You know, I want to make sure my sister gets in there. When she cut off her hair, my my cousin from California came for my last radiation treatment. So when you to, wait a minute. So when you cut off your hair, Deanna shaved her hair. Yes, she had to, a real little outro. Yeah. In solidarity with you. Yeah, and, and you know what? She didn't even. She was like, I was just tired of hair, and it was actually my niece that said, "Mom, you cut your hair because of." Uh, Fifi. Wow. She, and, and that's when it dawned on her. It was like, I'm just tired of hair. And so everybody, now that I'm on the other side, I realized other people were going through things that I didn't know. They didn't show me because she showed up and I was like, oh, you're an Afro. <laughs> 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 but that was her way. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you, when you, when you started losing your hair, Fee? Um, I felt like this is another thing. My dad, you know, I had, I first started wearing wigs and my dad was like, mm -mm, I like you without your hair. <laughs> he took me to go get some earrings and I put them in the floss. <laughs> and I was like, I got so many compliments being without hair. Wow, wow. I did. I did. Set us free. Set us free. Set yes. us free. I know. Uh, uh, you know, Tiara, Janine's uh, daughter, I was in the car and I just took off the wig. I was like, I'm hot. I, this is not who I am. This is part of the battle. So I'm just, I'm done with it. 
Oh my god! I can I cannot uh, listen. I can see you now. Just like and you know, oh and you know we get high. We ain't playing, right? Exactly. I'm like I'm done. This is this is my story. <laughs> this is who I am. Right. This is who I am. So I really wasn't attached to it. I, I wasn't attached to him. It's like okay. This is all okay. part of the process. Just look at the end of the tunnel. Just look at the end. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Did you have what was one of your lowest points? Let's see, did I have a low point? I know what kept me motivated sometimes when I was in the chemo chair was the thought of missing any of my niece or nephews milestones. They were pretty young then as far as graduations. Okay. Uh, not being there. Yeah, not being there. I felt like I had too much to pour, them, pour into them, so I couldn't leave. Um, I, had, I used to get chemo on Wednesday, so Fridays were like my bad day as far as physical, but I had a co-worker on Fridays that used to call me when I wanted to crawl up in the bed and it used to force me to, to talk. So I think when you have something to fight for, I, I didn't mm -hmm. actually go to a dark place, but I remember the adults would be fine, but these kids, I got to stay around for them. <laughs> okay. 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 So that kind of pulled, so you felt like you had something, a reason to live. Right. And something to fight for. Right. Okay. Wow, that's 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 good. And so I want to shift the conversation just a little bit to just the whole idea of self-care. Okay. What's you said you accidentally you you started out by saying, you know, you accidentally found the lump. You weren't necessarily intentionally doing your breast exam. You were in between mammograms. Mm -hmm. You discovered the lump that you had a lump. Um, just in the whole process of self care while you were going through. I understand you had support, but what type of self care did you do to help you through this uh, this journey with breast cancer? This fight. I accepted the way I was feeling. So if I was tired and needed a nap, okay, I took it. Um, I still worked. Even though my oncologist would, would say, you know, she would give me the time off. I wanted to work because I didn't want to be still. That's probably would have been a time I would have went into a dark place if I had nothing. But even with working, I'm not, you know what? I'm not showing up today. I can't show up today or listening to your body. Okay. So after I got down to you, wrote, you said acceptance was one of those things. Mm -hmm. well, acceptance is a big part of self-care because sometimes if we're fighting the right. reality of our situation and not accepting the reality of our situation, it brings us, we can go into, you know, stress mode, anxiety mode, right? and other physical things can begin to happen to us uh, because just because we haven't accepted our reality. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's so key. I'm glad you said that. That was your first thing, acceptance. It's, yes. How big is that mm -hmm. for self-care in general? Just accepting. I am 57. Right. And the things that are realities of being 57 that I have had to come to accept. Right. <laughs> And I can, I'm not 37, I'm not 27. And if I try to continue to live like that, I just accept where we are. And I think that's so key to self-care is acceptance, self-acceptance. Right. So you accept that your hair falling out. Mm -hmm. This is part of it. I heard you say that earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a part of the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So acceptance. And that was what was the next one you said? Oh, I was I was just saying about um, I wanted to work, but the days that I didn't work, it's still accepted. The days that I didn't work or couldn't work, I you know said okay, I can't do it today. I had a I had a I was fortunate I had a understanding manager, but I just didn't have any fronts to put on to put on. I just it, it just was what it was. I think so another you know, would you call that being in the moment or just being in the moment. Yeah. 
living in that moment. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just not happening today. It's just, I, I think another part of self-care that I did once Janine took my books is do not surround yourself with negative energy. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. Don't wow. read it. Don't look at it on television. Don't just do not surround yourself with negative energy. Wow, wow, wow. I'm writing these down. <laughs> and I hope that our listeners are taking notes. Do not surround yourself with negative energy. Uh-huh. I wrote that down. <laughs> Acceptance, being in the moment, or, or I'm going to call it living in the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, do not surround yourself with negative energy or people, huh? Right, or people. Anything negative. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, 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 good. Woo, that's, <laughs> look, whether you are going through breast cancer or anything, you might not be sick with anything physically. These just these are just good principles for self-care. Right, I do that today. I, I still do yeah. that today. Like around negative people or, you know, there's a lot going on in the world today. Sometimes I do have to turn off the news. I do yes. internalize that. Yes. Those are lessons I still do 12 years later. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yes. So I'm I'm telling you, you 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 have to do it. You have to find you gotta, yeah. You <laughs> we gotta do those things because if we don't, I mean we'll get sucked into this vortex of negativity. Right. We get sucked into, you know, this this and before you know, your thinking, your your negative, your thinking becomes negative. Right. The things that you're putting out, the words that you're speaking, your aura, the way you live, can be very negative because you've surrounded yourself with negative energy. So you said acceptance, living in the moment. Do not surround yourself with negative energy or people. Is there anything else you want to share for self care? Um, I heard you say something earlier. I didn't write it down, but you said something about listen to your body. Yeah, listen to your body and rest. Because when I said I was tired, I, uh -huh. I I took naps. I, you know, I wasn't feeling any type of way if I had to push through it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so, and give yourself permission to rest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important. Mm -hmm. And rest. I think as women, we don't do that. It's like we have to push through it. Um, no, I need to do 10, 20 things. But even now. Especially with the new environment and working from home, sometimes I just need to take a break and I just lay across the bed with you know, ten minutes. So I, I'm not that I'm speaking them out loud. Those are the lessons I learned while fighting. I still do today. Yeah. So you can fight, but you still got to rest even in the fight. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's part of the fight. Because you can use some energy to fight, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is important because sometimes we think because we're fighting or we have to fight that we have to always be fighting. Right. <laughs> no, I'm fighting, but I'm resting and I'm resting so I can fight. Right? Right. I'll be right back, but I'm a rest, but I'm coming back to this fight. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that, Steve. I love that. Girl, I'm telling you, thank you for sharing your journey with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing these self-care tips with us, talking to us about the role of support, the role of self-care, and why it's important um, when we're in a fight like breast cancer mm -hmm. that we that we that we do these things and that we have this type of support to help us get through this place. You know, it's it's right. so important, you all. Those of you that are listening to this, this podcast, I really want you to know this whole idea of, of self-care and this self-care movement is so important. You know, we're in 2020. And if we didn't know before 2020, we should know now mm -hmm. the importance of self-care. Most of us, um, what we're hearing, we know the statistics that are out there concerning even COVID-19 and um, how it's impacting communities of color. And much of it is related to our, pre, uh, our comorbidities, 
pre-existing conditions and things because we are not taking care of ourselves. And I want to suggest to you, um, uh, Fee, that because I know your journey and how, how you were taking care of yourself before you got diagnosed. Right. I believe that might have had a lot to do with your recovery. And mm -hmm. 12 years later, you're here to talk about it. Yes. Yes, because I was doing the right thing. I was exercising. So my body was not weak. So, and you're right, it's, it's probably had a lot to do with my recovery. And I think that's why my sister asked that question. Uh, do you feel like your body, you he know, you. betrayed uh -huh. you? Uh -huh. I, I was doing those things. And like, a lot of times we think that because we are, you know me, I'm I'm up five days a week working out and mm -hmm. in this in this pandemic I started hiking and doing things and now you know I didn't join the double dutch club so I'm <laughs> open. Right. So like the other day, what is all this stuff you're doing? But you know, and I and I believe that if I if I do get sick with something, I believe that I'm building myself up now. So that my body can handle an illness like breast right. cancer, if God, for, God forbid, that happens, or mm -hmm. or whatever you know uh, happens, hopefully that I'll be my body because of what I'm doing now. And you know what? You know maybe your body didn't betray you. Maybe the re your body went into defense mode, fight mode. Yeah for you because of what you had done. I've heard, often heard how you treat your body prior to right. an illness. You know, if you treat your body good when you're young, when you get old, it'll treat you good. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. Of course, we know that there's some things that are beyond our control, but things that we can control, it's good that we do that and that we engage in these practices, these self-care practices, so that we can be healthy and that our body can sustain uh, itself or, uh, and fight. In when we're going through illnesses like breast cancer. I'm so glad that you're around to tell your story. Yes. <laughs> 12 years later, <laughs> you're still a fighter. You're still a survivor. And you're not only that, but you're fighting for other women. You're sharing your story. Listen, I want you, those of you that are listening to this podcast, um, follow us. You can find this podcast um, on any of your podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. There's so many places that you can listen to this podcast. You can listen to us while you're in the park, while you're on the treadmill, while you're on the airplane, wherever. You can do that or you can watch this um, um, this interview, this conversation on my YouTube channel at Dr. Tony Al G. Alvarado, my YouTube channel. Go there, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love for you to um, be a part of my YouTube YouTube community there and um, you can watch not only this uh, podcast episode but all the other uh, videos that are there you can go back and, um, and through our catalog and just learn uh, be inspired be educated be informed okay so you can make informed decisions when you get in a fight like uh, breast cancer I want to invite you to join the harmonize your life uh, self-care network women we have so many women Felicia is a part Felicia is a part mm -hmm. of this network she is a part you heard her talk about our good friend Janine and Tamara they are part of the network listen mm -hmm. we started this network so that we could have a community of women, particularly women of color, where we can come together and support one another, be there for one another, laugh together, cry together, get information together, strengthen one another. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. And so we're doing that. Um, when you when you join the network, you get to come into Tea Time with Dr. Tony and um, you learn from other women like Felicia and others that we brought uh, to the network to inform us, inspire us, encourage us so that we can be healthy spirit, soul, and body. I'm thankful today for my guest, Felicia Felicia McBride. I'm glad that she came on to share her story in this month where we are highlighting breast cancer survivors. Um, uh, we're also going to be highlighting survivors of domestic violence this month. So stay tuned, stay with us. Felicia, I'm glad you came on today. You can follow Felicia on Instagram at Ivy's to Pearls 1908. Ivy two pearls that's ivy ivy why the number two pearls 1908 you can figure out why she has <laughs> her. Right. i'm just saying 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 that. So that's her IG handle. Um, so you can follow her there on, on Facebook, 
Um, you can look her up at Felicia Fifi McBride. That's what we call her, Fifi. You can look her up there. Um, you can um, you can just uh, follow her, um, and um, and um, you can when you when this uh, uh, when you get this um, this message when you get this link to this podcast episode, share it with other women. Listen, yeah. get this message out. Felicia said she was in between mammograms, ladies. Mm-hmm. I just had my mammogram. I always have my mammogram um, in July or June, July of every year. I just had my mammogram, but something could happen in between July 2020 and July 2021. And so, and they always tell you, even when you go to have your mammogram, girls, that just because you get a good report does not mean that um, you cannot check yourself, do your annual uh, mam- mammogram, but also check yourself in between. Mm-hmm. Do that. Check yourself. Be 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 familiar with what your body feels like, what your breasts feel like, what they look like. Stand in the mirror. And if you see something that doesn't look right, check it out. Don't just be like, oh, I wonder what that is. No, go mm-hmm. check it out. Call somebody. Felicia called her mother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She picked up the phone and called her mother. Then she called her girlfriend. Then she her girlfriend called me, okay, and we got on a three-way. <laughs> Here we are. Get you a good network of women, a good support system because you're going to need it, not just for breast cancer or breast health, but you're going to need it for life. Mm-hmm. We yeah. need support. We need support in our lives. And so I am, again, grateful that my good girlfriend, my childhood girlfriend is my guest today, Felicia McBride, sharing on this subject of, uh, of breast cancer, surviving breast cancer, the role of self-care and support. Thank you again, Felicia, Thank for coming you. on and being a part of our conversation on today. I love you love and you I celebrate you. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am celebrating my sister. I'm celebrating you because you are still here and you're here to tell your story. And I'm grateful to the Lord for that. All right. Um, I love you. And we'll talk you. soon. We'll sure talk soon. See you next week on All the right. Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self Care for Women of Color podcast with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado. I am so delighted about bringing the Harmonize Your Life podcast to you. Would you do me a favor? If you are enjoying this this podcast, would you email me at hello at drtonyalvarado.com? I want to hear from you. I want your feedback. I want to know if there are any other topics that you are interested in as it relates to wellness, self-care, nutrition, or just overall bringing harmony into your life. Email me, contact me at hello at drtonyalvarado.com.